In Vectorworks 2009, we have added over 100 new default gradients, which can be accessed through the Attributes palette or added as a favorite to the resource browser. Here I have a small urban courtyard, which is okay, but I want to add something to make the design stand out more. By using gradients, you're able to enhance the appearance of your document and easily display the direction of light in a 2D view. To illustrate the effectiveness of gradients, I'm going to edit a table symbol and create a new gradient that looks more like glass and add some chairs. To create a new gradient, go to the resource browser, click on the resources button and select create new resource in and the name of your document. You will see that there is a list of different resources that can be created in the document. In this case, I'm going to select Gradient. The Gradient Editor dialog box opens. In this dialog box, you are able to control the colors you would like, the transition between the colors, and how many color spots you would like to use. For this example, I'm going to change the black color spot to a light blue. To do this, select the color spot that you would like to change, then click on the color chip to get the standard color picker on Windows or the color wheel on Mac. This gives you the option to choose any color that you would like. If you would like to add another color spot to the gradient, simply click in the color spot area and a new color spot is added. If you accidentally click in this area or want to remove a color spot, just click and drag the color spot away from the gradient preview. For this gradient, I want to have a third color spot. By dragging the color spots and adjusting the midpoints, I'm able to control how the colors transition through the gradient. I want to note that because gradients are resources, they can always be edited through the resource browser if you need to make a change. Now that I've created my gradient, I can apply it to any 2D surface object by selecting the object and double clicking on the gradient in the resource browser or applying the gradient through the attributes palette. In the attributes palette, if you click on the Fill Gradient Settings, there are several options you can choose to change the look of your gradient. I recommend playing around with these settings to see the different options available to you. If you need to change the angle, length, or location of your gradient, I prefer using the Attribute Mapping Tool in the Basic Tool Palette. Once you have selected the object that has the gradient, click on the Attribute Mapping Tool you will see a line appear on the selected object. This line represents the control points used to position the gradient. Just like editing a line object, you can click on the selection handles to control the angle, length, and location of the gradient. Once I have set the position, I'm now going to change the opacity of this object to give it more of a glass look. Next, I'm going to add some chairs to the table using a chair symbol from the resource browser. Instead of trying to place each chair in the proper location, once I've inserted one, I can use the duplicate array command to easily insert the rest of the chairs. With the symbol selected, go to the Edit menu, select Duplicate Array, and the Duplicate Array dialog box appears. Because I'm adding chairs to a circular table, I'm going to select Circular Array, duplicate the object three times, set a 90 degree angle between the duplicates, and the center of rotation will be based on my next mouse click. Now that I have my chairs, I'm going to select all of them and go to Modify, Send, Send to Back so my chairs are behind my table object. Next, I'm going to edit the chair symbol and add a gradient to give a shadow effect. Instead of creating a new gradient for my chair, I'm going to add a grayscale gradient to the chair and mask the existing color. First, I'm going to select the polylines that represent the back and seat of the chair by holding down the shift key and selecting each polyline. Next, hold down the option key on a Mac or control key on a PC and click on the polylines to create a duplicate copy right on top of the existing polyline. Now, through the attributes palette, I'm going to apply a grayscale gradient.
Next, I'm going to select the back of the chair and reverse the direction of the gradient through the Fill Gradient settings in the Attributes palette so that both dark parts of the grayscale gradient meet. Then, select both polylines that have the gradient applied to them and change the opacity to 40%. As you can see here, I didn't change the existing fill of the chair. I just added transparent gradients to give a shadow effect. Next, I'm going to move the arms of the chair to the front of my object and exit my symbol. I'm going to fast forward to a more complete courtyard where I've applied more gradients so you can see the end result. As you can see here, by adding gradients to your 2D design, you can give a better representation of light and enhance the graphic presentation of your drawing. 